of mm -hmm. sun exposure, um, the players, what other things are involved in us being able to, because we can be taking it in, but there are some enzymes, let's say, that are um, necessary for the conversion from the inactive form to the active form that we may not have. So we're taking it in, but it's not being converted because one of those players isn't there for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, and then the environment. We, we just heard from Dr. Dr. Micah, the liver is important, liver function is important, liver health is important, kidney function is important, kidney health is important. For that process, that conversion from the inactive form to the active form of vitamin D to exert its multiple functions in the body, one of them being the immune system. So we not, it's not only taking it in, but is the environment, are those tissues, those organs involved, healthy? So that's something that has to be assessed by your physician. Um, so I just wanted to punctuate that because it's not only just taking it, we, the environment has to be right. Um, the right conditions have to be present as well. So please keep that in mind. So it's not just about taking it. There's some other, there's some other components. So it makes it, making it a little bit more complex than simply taking a supplement. So speaking about the environment, I actually don't like um, prescribing vitamin D at all, personally, um, mm -hmm. at least not an initial, um, not as an initial treatment because of the environment piece. Um, I was mm -hmm. speaking recently and there was a young lady who, um, it was about, I think the, the conference was about lupus, the event was about lupus. And a young lady from the audience was saying how her doctor put her on vitamin D and she was taking like, I don't know, like a lot of vitamin D every single day. And she had been taking a lot for like months and months and months and her levels were still low. Mm. Her problem is not vitamin D. She has other issues. What are the other cofactors that are needed or what are the other nutrients that are needed um, or the other players that are needed to make vitamin D um, work and available in the body? So, you know, um, I no longer live in Arizona, but when I was living in Arizona, just about every single person that we tested, their vitamin D levels were low. We mm -hmm. didn't have, you know, we were always sunny and everybody's vitamin D levels were low. And it wasn't because everybody was avoiding the sun, right? Like it wasn't, that wasn't mm -hmm. it. Um, so my question would be, are you getting all the nutrients you need that in order for vitamin D to actually work well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, magnesium is a huge one. And I know we were all taught, at least most of us were taught, that most of us are magnesium deficient. Mm -hmm. And you need it's magnesium 85%. for almost everything. I'm sorry, what'd you say, Dr. Chico? Oh, it's like 85% or something. In exactly. Terms of our magnesium exactly. Deficient. And so we're not, we're most, of, most people are eating a sad diet, which means standard American diet. So um, they're not getting the nutrients they need. And even if they are eating a healthy diet, that diet still may not have the right amount of nutrients. So I would say first, let's get all the other nutrients involved so that you can fortify the body that way, see what happens after you do that for a few months. And then if you still need vitamin D to start supplementing low levels, because I'm afraid for that lady, the young lady who's taking the high, high amounts of vitamin D and it's not working, where is that going? Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, which means that's being stored in her body, right? Who knows what negative effects to her body that is causing? like bone health and electrical conduction of her nervous system and all of that. So that would be my concern about vitamin D as well as, um, as well as people just going out and buying it and taking it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I also have that issue with people with their digestion. I mean, the same thing, like if you're not properly absorbing in the first place, if you have diarrhea, constipation, gas bloating, you haven't, you know, had a solid stool in years, you're probably not going to absorb many supplements at all. So when I see patients, because there's such a skin gut connection, what mm -hmm. I'm going to see is people with low vitamin D, and then they're taking vitamin D and zinc and A, and they're taking, first of all, a bunch of single vitamins, which is great in some instances, but I hate when people come in with 40 pill bottles and they're like, but I'm taking everything mm -hmm. and I feel horrible. And I'm like, but yeah. you haven't pooped in like four years. Like yeah. you're not going to be able to absorb <laughs> anything. 
So I like, it has like, like Dr. Hamilton was saying, Dr. Trisha was saying, like you have to be able to, you have to look at all the factors and it's mm -hmm. not just vitamin D, but you have to get those vitamin D levels checked and, you know, just to kind of, you know, toot our own horn, beat, beat. Naturopath, the doctor's been testing vitamin D levels for Oh, yes. <laughs> when <laughs> people used to ask why you're checking it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can I tell you when I went to American Academy of Dermatology meeting and, and, a, and a doctor, a very prominent doctor, stood on stage and said vitamin D levels were useless and there was no evidence to show that vitamin D did anything to help with acne or psoriasis or eczema or anything. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This was like just five years ago. Wow. And, and I was like, are you kidding me? And then he called us a bunch of quacks, but I, they didn't know I was an audience. But still, the, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like real <laughs> discreet <laughs> to slide in and slide out just to hear the truth of what's being spoken. And I'm like, mm -hmm. that's not true. And now it's like, I have more patients now with their vitamin D levels being checked by MDs. Than I ever. It's like the new thing. It's like yeah. the new, new thing, thing, but like, yeah. it's, a, it's, a new thing. <laughs> but it's yeah. not. <laughs> but, you know, Dr. Sam also mentioned some good pieces, just piggybacking on what Dr. DeGera said, is that we, like as an NDs, we get to the root cause. So like all the points that we're talking about is finding out why it's happening in the first place, because it's the same with, you know, patients I'll have all of a sudden they're on like 10, you know, regularly on 10,000 or much higher levels of vitamin D and their numbers are barely going up or you have someone on 10,000 for a year and they're still at like 35. And it's like, how is that possible when you're in such a high dose? Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes, you know, even in the, like a functional medicine perspective might just to keep taking it rather than saying like, why is this actually happening? What is the root cause? Like what you just said, how are you absorbing your other nutrients? How are you just physiologically, like your sleep, your immune function, your gut health, all of those pieces have to be looked at because otherwise you're not really, you're just throwing it over a system that is not able to actually even handle or manage it. So I think that's just something, it's interesting, the conversation, because that's something I think that's our, our tenets, our base tenets of how we, how we practice. Mm -hmm. um, something that I'm thinking that, that came to mind, Dr. DJ, Dr. Dajar, as you were talking about the single, single, you know, like monotherapy. Um, so we, we were, we're having this discussion, we're seeing now as more and more, we're, we're seeing the link between vitamin D and immune health. Mm -hmm. um, and folks like, oh, okay, this is the answer. <laughs> no one thing is a panacea, but you know, folks here, oh, vitamin D can help me with my immune system. That can um, have me either, if I, become sick. It can prevent me from contracting COVID, be becoming sick from COVID. It can impact my outcomes. It can ha help me to have better outcomes. Let me go take a bunch of vitamin, um, uh, vitamin D. Um, but when we're talking about immune function, the immune system, there are many other factors that go into a healthy, robust immune response. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not just taking one thing or another, you're doing things in combination. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. How do you address um, or what would be your approach to addressing that? Like, hey, Dr. DJ, Dr. D Jekyll, Dr. Micah, Dr. Tasha, I'm taking all this vitamin D because I don't want to get COVID. I don't want to be um, infected when, it, it, when we have this the secondary wave that's come that may come you know, you know in the fall so how do you address someone being pretty focused on taking one thing to impact the immune system yeah I, well i would just say like we just um talked about obviously we're gonna look at getting a a full picture we want to know everything as much as possible uh, that we can find out about just your health history in general but also to say, hey, vitamin D might actually be a good thing for you because it not only helps support the immune system, but we've also had studies and seen studies where chronic disease processes that we now know um, kind of um, are more prevalent with COVID infection and COVID morbidity and mortality is uh, diabetes and hypertension. And so as it relates to vitamin D, vitamin D has been shown at least with having low levels of vitamin D to decrease the substance in the endothelial cells, those are the small cells that line the blood vessels, it's gonna decrease the amount of nitrous oxide that you produce via those endothelial cells. And so if you don't have enough vitamin D, you don't have enough NO, 
that means that those blood vessels are going to be more constricted. They're going to be tighter. Um, so that's going to lead to more hypertension or higher blood pressure, right? Mm -hmm. And so we can see kind of, oh, it, it helps with um, blood pressure. It's going to help with diabetes in a sense, because it's going to help with insulin um, resistance. Um, it also will help uh, with that pro-inflammatory piece as well. So it's going to help mm -hmm. modulate that pro-inflammatory process, which we've seen, obviously, COVID-19 is still fairly new. So we're learning about it every day. But we're seeing how vitamin D could potentially be impactful in a few of the different areas that COVID is running rampant in at this point. So I would tell the person who's presenting to me that, hey, again, let's look at your entire profile. Let's see if vitamin D is a good thing for you. If it is, then potentially it could be great for COVID prevention as well. Wonderful. Other folks want to chime in on that? Or did the mic, mic, Dr. Micah just answer it for us? <laughs> <laughs> no, my biggest thing is just um, like the complete overhaul of health. Right. Yeah. Um, if a person is taking a bunch of single supplements, have they gotten the results that they wanted? And if they have not gotten the results that they wanted, then it wasn't working. Just right. like for the person that is hypertensive or diabetic or, you know, atherosclerotic that are taking, you know, 5, 10, 15 medications, it's not working. So we have to start over and do something all over again. So that might mean not taking any supplements and just getting you to eat well and drink some water because right. you look thirsty. Start there, right? Mm -hmm. And then start walking outside. And if it's, if it's nice enough outside, wear a tank top so you can get some sun. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, how's your sleep? Get some sleep. Are you pooping? Get the shit out, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> literally, I don't even know if you did that. Literally, um, are you stressed? Right. So if you start with all of that other stuff, even though like people want to take something, like mm -hmm. people really just mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. take something, and it's not always about taking something. Let's get everything in your life together. Um, and if you have to take something, I'm probably not going to put you on vitamin D first. Like, let's get you some nutrients in mm -hmm. first. Um, so a good multivitamin, a fish oil, you know, we can start with the basics, see how you're doing and then double back um, to more of those specific nutrients, whether it's vitamin D or a specific B, B vitamin or you know, um, a, a mineral or something like that. Like we can get the specifics later after we sort of overhaul the whole system mm -hmm. to get you well. Because if your vitamin D levels are low, if, you're di if you have diabetes, hypertension, it's not just about one nutrient. So that's sort of where I would go with that mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing about it, just like, can you guys hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, just like Dr. Trisha was saying, like, people, what, what we do is naturopathic medicine and that's it like it doesn't it's not about a supplement because you can go to a doc in a box and get a supplement that's not it's it's the whole picture it's like we and and health starts in the gut with with naturopathic medicine it starts in how you absorb detoxification you know making sure your amongtories are open you get you can get all like you can get as woo-woo or not with naturopathic medicine but the reality is if you're not pooping you're not eating right and you're not drinking water it doesn't matter and the majority of people aren't and and no one but no one wants to hear that because you have to then take personal responsibility because it's easier to take a pill and everyone's been trained to take a pill mm -hmm, so in mm -hmm. a lot of res in a lot of respects while i'm training my patients because that's what it is it's teaching them and empowering them to take their health into their own hands and while i'm doing that i might give them a pill almost like a placebo because i know they're not absorbing it like i'm like okay well you can take that pill there can i have that vitamin d i'm like sure you're not absorbing it. You haven't been absorbing. You have a vitamin D level of 17. <laughs> and you've been taking this vitamin D for six months at 10,000 IUs, which is hot, like extremely hot. Why is your vitamin D level 17? Where the lowest is like 19? Is it like 19? And, and people are even below that. And yeah. they're walking in. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, every time I'm like, oh, that's the lowest vitamin D I've seen until I saw one of nine not a couple of weeks ago. And I was oh. like, what is happening? And they're like, oh, I've been taking this vitamin D my doctor put me on. I'm like, well, that's not helping. 
so we got to go back to what Dr. Tosha was saying. Like, but it's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's almost like I'm trying to convince them that that's mm -hmm. the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so yes, yeah, it's, yeah. and it's not. Yeah. The whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not when you look at it, I think it's like woo woo. Like I think some of the things we're talking about are just back to the basics. It's like mm -hmm. interesting. You just talked about COVID and you talked, you know, what do we do to present? Because this is going to reappear again in the fall. We know that this is going to come again. And everybody is focusing on like, you can't get zinc, like for the life, you know, you can't yeah. get all of these supplements and um, all of these are good, but it's like, we're not talking about lifestyle stuff like now's the time mm -hmm. i shouldn't be gaining 15 pounds during covid you know i need to be taking care of my health why when i go to the grocery store the only stuff left on the shelf are like organic healthy stuff you know vegetables mm -hmm. like i'm totally fine there you know all the ice cream's gone all the you know the, all the veggie burgers and pizza <laughs> you know, veggie burgers. those might be there like all of the healthy things and we're not talking about that being fit they've actually came out with an article talking about exercises that exercise benefit which we all know but specifically for covid in terms of the lung um clearing out the lungs increasing mm -hmm. um you know you know in terms of um sod which helps to uh, increase in terms of the antioxidants to kind mm -hmm. of clear which are specifically for like respiratory functioning and things like that so we're not talking about all of those other things to keep you in your health to be good and not prevention of a lot of these chronic disease conditions which put you at greater risk. So the vitamins and all these things are great and they're all adjuncts that we do. But when you look at like with our medicine, it's that pyramid effect. So the bottom, the foundation is all the lifestyle pieces and the higher intervention is the supplements and then the medications and things like that rather than the reverse way. But I think the American way is the quick fix solution. Mm -hmm. So we're not naturally minded that way. But if you want to talk about how do we help support ourselves the most it's all of the lifestyle stuff um it's all the base the, the back to basic pieces that yeah. we don't want to do and i didn't even think about the fact that like tyler perry when he mentioned vitamin d i think as a naturopathic doctor i take for granted that people know this something mm -hmm. stuff because it was right. one thing yeah. he did a two-minute video that was like you know i talked to my md that's a dermatologist and she said my, you know, I need to take vitamin D because there's a correlation out of some studies that show that people who were basically low in vitamin D, the, those areas had, you know, higher incidence of COVID and that those areas were people that had lower vitamin D. And so take vitamin D because it's, it's helpful. And I was like, oh, is that, is that as simple as it? And it just went viral. And I was like, well, did the people not know that? <laughs> like, so I didn't realize you know how simple it can be like health mm -hmm. is very simple i think we complicate it because people want to have complicated diseases and mm -hmm. i've seen that with my patients where they come in and they haven't been better and they're like i know it has to be you know heavy metals mold and it has to be mm -hmm. you know I, I have this you know bacteria that's only found in goats and now <laughs> say goats <laughs> Because I hear you want to have the that makes you extra special. Though. I know, right? You make me <laughs> and all the while she just needs some water. Uh, <laughs> so you thirsty? You thirsty? All the time. <laughs> and I'm just, but nobody wants to hear that. I'm like, okay, so you don't drink water? Yeah. You you, you don't poop for once a week? Like really? And then mm -hmm. and then you're like, you know, you could just drink some water, but see they've been suffering this whole time and for it to be simple, it's almost like it looks poorly on them. And I think it's an ego thing. <clears throat> so I, so mm -hmm. I try to make it like, Hey, that's okay. The world, the United States, this is, this is what we do. This is our mm -hmm. normal. So you're mm -hmm. not alone. Don't feel embarrassed. You just need to drink some water because you're thirsty. That's what you're thirsty. Right. <laughs> right. You're right. thirsty. Right. Dr. Tasha, can you put that on the t-shirt, please? I would like to sell those. Yes. Well, you thirsty? <laughs> you look thirsty. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't read it for y'all tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you thirsty. You thirsty. Hey, drink some water. You look thirsty. <laughs> yeah, that would be that, that. I like that one. I like that one. I got but that. I, that's I what actually what I posted on my face, my um, Instagram page a couple days ago. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Drink some water because you look thirsty. Mm. <laughs> As we all drink our water. Mm. Right, right. My water. Right. I'm like looking for my water bottle now. I'm like, oh gosh. It's empty. See, it means I drink. 
I, Everybody I'm not thirsty. Everybody right drink some water at, on, that's watching live because I know you're thirsty. Take you're a thirsty. Take a you look thirsty. <laughs> um, but I, I think that a part of the reason why this conversation, you know, so we started, you know, the title of it was COVID and vitamin D. Yeah. <laughs> but as we, what's coming out in this conversation and what I think is also important for the folks that are watching to hear is that, yes, there is this component because it impacts our immune system. We are also hearing through all the things that are being shared that there are a wide variety of um, functions that vitamin D um, uh, has in the body. So, and it's not, there are other contributing factors to a healthy and robust immune system, mm -hmm. to health in general. Dr. Micah mentioned you know, the link between vitamin D and hypertension, vitamin D and diabetes. And so it's, there, there's much more to this conversation, which is why these things are being brought in. Just in case you're wondering, why are we talking about all of these other things when the title was COVID and vitamin D? Because it's not just about that. There are so many other things that we have to take into consideration. How are you, how are you eliminating or pooping? How are you sleeping? Those things impact. So if we're not pooping, there's something going on in our digestive system that impacts our ability to, to absorb. So you can take all the vitamin D you want to, but you may not be able to absorb it. You may not be able to convert it if there's something going on in the GI. Um, if you're not sleeping, if you're not getting the adequate amounts of sleep or you have poor quality of sleep, then that's going to have impacts on your immune system. I mentioned in the, in the live that I did last night, um, it also impacts you know, insomnia, also impacts the food choices that we make which can have an impact on your immune health. So mm -hmm. all of these things are connected and it's important to have these broader conversations. I'm mm -hmm. a fan of broader, more nuanced conversations that bring all these other factors in. Um, and I hope that is beneficial to you all too, because it's not just this one thing that's, in, that, 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 that's being impacted. There are all these other factors that um, also need to be considered as you're working with your physician as you're making a choice, as you're making an individual choice for what you're going to do and what you want to do, what you want to explore, we think that you should also have these things in mind. I actually got a question. Um, Wonderful. On, uh, I got a question. Someone asked, um, how much sunlight should we be getting? Especially, you know, those of us who are darker skin, how much mm -hmm. sunlight should we be getting? And I think that will also lead into a conversation that we were sort of having offline um, where we were talking about what is like, what level of vitamin D do we need, right? Um, do we need, does everybody need the same level of vitamin D? Um, so ladies, what, how much sun should, sunshine should we be getting? So I'll tell you guys what I was taught in school and then y'all can correct me um, based on what you've read or learned. Or agree. <laughs> that so someone that's fair skin meaning someone that's white could be to make could make about a hundred thousand i use uh, vitamin d within like 20 minutes of unfettered sunlight meaning mm -hmm. like without any sunscreen on mm -hmm. sun, 20 minutes hundred thousand i use bam and it would take someone darker about two hours to make that same amount um, and then that would incrementally de increase based on your shade of darkness but because it wasn't a lot of like talk about skin and like health and like cultural d competency and differences i didn't know i didn't learn anything else i just knew that if you were mm -hmm. a, a brown, brown skin you needed two hours and if you were a little darker than that you needed more um, to mm -hmm. make a hundred thousand i use does anyone have anything similar or Absolutely the same. So same yeah. information um, yeah, that you convey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad we're talking about that too, because a lot of people, at least African-American I hear, it's like, oh, my vitamin D levels are low because I never go outside. It's because I stay away from the sun. But it's not, also, it's not just because of that. Right. When we go out, the melanin in our, in our color, this, the melanin actually blocks it. So it makes it, it makes it take us, we have to be out in the sun longer to get the same level of vitamin D that somebody like Dr. Dejara said that is fair complexion. And then we also, you know, many of us may not be in the sun as long too. We're concerned about being in the sun longer. That's another thing. So then that makes that chance even less than that. So it has to be a minimum, like an hour, which most people are not 
obviously right. doing so right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i mean like you said uh melanin is a natural sunblock which is great for skin cancer not good for vitamin d production so right. mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have to uh we i tell most uh african americans or black people that they need to supplement eventually but once again all things being equal that's if your digestion is fixed once your water is right fixed, like i will supplement and i generally will start with a multivitamin um, and if i need to pump it up I can go anywhere starting at 5,000 I use up to 10,000 I use a day um, somewhere in between there if they're low and then I'll you know I'm assessing them the whole time but the goal is not for them to be on a bunch of supplements ever right, right. Get their vitamins from food and then going out in the sun but we have to supplement in some instances and for a while if they're unhealthy so you know just getting them to that optimal level of health is is like we said before is important but yeah, the darker they are, I do tend to, tend to see a correlation with that, with vitamin D levels being low, especially if they are avoiding the sun. And mm -hmm. a lot of people like Dr. Hamilton, I don't know if I agree with you, Dr. Hamilton, about that not going out in the sun in Arizona, because I lived in Arizona and I did not want to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was wondering. Like, I was like, maybe because you're staying inside. <laughs> it wasn't that, I mean, I mean, that was a big thing, especially in the summertime, a lot of us would not, but I mean, we still got some sun, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And we got more sun than the rest of the country and everybody is still tanked. So that's not the whole mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. So there's that. But I do want to make sure that I, um, that I explain that, um, darker skin and blocking from the sun is not necessarily a negative thing. Mm -hmm. because we always frame it as a negative um historically dark-skinned mm -hmm. people lived closer to the equator and that meant that we were outside longer so you got more sun exposure because you're closer to the equator and the sun is shining more and you're outside more because you're active and you are you know you just do things outside and so it was more of a protective thing because mm -hmm. we didn't actually need to have that much vitamin d um that quickly so it was actually a good thing um we migrated all across the earth and it's we still have that same protective mechanism so you know i don't want it to be framed as a negative that you know the the dark skin and vitamin d it's that's just evolutionarily how we were built um so there's that yeah mm -hmm. yeah absolutely <laughs> and then not only not only for um not you know having as much vitamin d but also protecting mm -hmm. dna right so right. it basically mm -hmm. was a protective mechanism um for dna damage which is cellular damage wow. so that's even more wonderful um the other piece i wanted to say too i think just the society that well this is pre-covid that we had accustomed ourselves to um where everyone is in an office building the kids are in school yeah. eight nine hours a day and so even though you know it may feel like oh we're not avoiding the sun but just the way society was set up i mean we are inside for most mm -hmm. of the time mm -hmm. um being able to open blinds or windows still wouldn't be adequate enough for us to be able to absorb those uvb rays so i think now albeit this you know whole situation is 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 very unfortunate we are losing a lot of lives people some people are really sick but i think for those of us who are still well those of us who are still able to get out while physically distanced right i don't like social distancing while we're physically distanced um we can still get outside yeah. um, if you have a patio go on your patio um take a walk around your neighborhood ride the bicycle i know my neighbors are probably tired of me and my kids riding up and down <laughs> our place with our bicycles but we're going to be outside this is going to be a time like you ladies have already said to get back to the basics mm -hmm. this is a time that we've never experienced before where everyone is basically home um not because we are choosing to be but because this is just where we are as a society uh, as a globe at this point mm -hmm. and so let's let's take this time if we're healthy and well to do it to reframe and say hey I'm, I'm i'm here i can go out i can get a little bit more sunshine than i would if i was in the office or at school um and let's make these like small incremental changes so that we can keep them with us as we slowly go back into 
Mm-hmm. Hopefully not oh, into the grind culture, right? Right. Um, I know it's going to be new and different, but let's hang on to some of those basics that we've talked about. Working on our digestion, working on sleep, even though, you know, I'm close to finishing Netflix. Um, but <laughs> let's work on all of those things. <laughs> so that, that. <laughs> yeah, so that we can have them and hold on to them and keep them um, as a, you know, a foundation once we're out of this thing. Mm-hmm. That speaks awesome. to um, mindset shift. Yeah. Um, I actually saw, so there was a, a, a rapper, Stick from Dead Prez, if any of you know him. Um, he had posted that he and his son were walking one day, um, this was just several weeks ago, actually, at the beginning of all of this. And um, uh, his son said, wow, all these people are outside, you know, together, they're playing with their kids, they're like having activities outside. It's almost like they were quarantined before, mm. and now they're free. So, you know, as we go back into society and we create a new normal, let's not go back into the quarantine that we had before. Let's start Mm -hmm. to shift our mindset around health. Mm -hmm. Let's shift our mindset around, um, shift our mindset around um, how we approach health. Start doing some of these basic things that we're talking about as opposed to running for the next pill because Mm -hmm. the next pill is not necessarily going to save us. It's just going to be something else we're spending money on when you still have all these underlying things to take care of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I do want to be my... (laughs) (laughs) I saw saw this meme that had a showing it was like pre-COVID and you know, everyone was like on their phone at the table mm-hmm. and they showed like post or during COVID, like everyone's out in nature. It's exactly. like everyone's it's out exactly because we don't, have any, we don't have any opportunity because everything's closed. So we can't go to the mall. We can't go mm-hmm. to the only place and the only thing we can do. And you know, one of the tenants for naturopathic mm-hmm. medicine, I think it's not one of the tenants, but oftentimes lifestyle stuff will recommend is being in nature because mm-hmm. nature is connected with happiness. We know vitamin D levels, low vitamin D levels, are connected with higher risk for like depression. Mm-hmm. So areas that have less sunlight and things like that also have higher depression rates. So that's another thing I look at, at least in the winter time, but the connection to nature is huge because it lets, it grounds us. So yeah. oftentimes I'm recommending to people like being outside at least for 20, 30 minutes a day. Obviously the vitamin D, that's a good piece, but also to connect you to something kind of bigger than yourself. It just grounds you happiness there's so many studies on the importance of nature yes. so yeah it's another piece and you can also get vitamin d from food and i don't think we talk about any specifics but you know right. thinking about your fish um you know just making sure that there's another part to that with the, you know mercury and things like that but <laughs> sardines and mackerel some of the smaller fishes oh, salmon mm-hmm. salmon um uh, wild caught salmon, not Atlantic salmon. Okay. <laughs> Let's be specific, a little bit more specific for those of you who go there. Um, and then at the same time, you know, you can get it from, I mean, eggs, it, it, collard greens for people who are like vegetarian or vegan and don't want to eat eggs or oh, oh, vegetarian, they want to do mm-hmm. eggs. There's several sources for vitamin D and most, but mostly fish eggs and like green. And mushrooms. Mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. What else? Anything else, ladies? I'm actually doing a Google search now because I didn't remember. <laughs> that's pretty much vegetables. That's, because, yeah. Well, now yeah. you're going to say dairy. <laughs> and I did not want to say dairy because I, I mean, you can say exactly. dairy, but whatever. But dairy yeah. is fortified. So it's yeah. not like dairy had it in there right. originally. They just took some vitamin D drops and put it in the thing and said, right. like this. When you could have just taken your own but mm, that's mm. And then most people of color are lactose intolerant too. So it's kind of like right. <laughs> it's almost like ninety percent right. or something like that. Yes. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So those are the foods we get vitamin D from and you know, just kind of, you know, letting people know where they can get sources of vitamin D because when it goes back to you wanna eat healthy and since all the food is gone anyway, just go to the vegetable <laughs> aisle and <go> there. <laughs> it's waiting for you. Right. <laughs> it wants some love. Here's some kale, some <laughs> corn. You know, yes. you guys watching uh, YouTube all the time. Learn to cook. Learn to. It's it's all yeah. It's it's like quick. <laughs> you can okay. saute greens real quick, and you don't have to boil them to death. Because I know there's some people of color. I'm watching them. They're on my page. Don't boil your greens to death. And if you do, drink the liquor, as they call it. Yes. Too. Right. Yeah. Right. So I think that's. <laughs> that's very right that's a very important <laughs> you know how we prepare like how we prepare our foods you know ultimately ideally 
you know, speaking as, you know, all of us speaking as naturopathic doctors, we, it would be lovely for folks to be having adequate intake of a varied diet that when I ask you what you eat, what you tend to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'm hearing a variety in the foods that you list. I'm hearing a variety of fruits and the vegetables that would be lovely because ideally that is where I would want to, I would want your, your vitamins, your minerals to be coming from, right. your macro, right. your micronutrients, that's where I want it to be coming from rather than it coming from a, a laundry list of supplements that you're taking. Because the pill um, is supposed to supplement your diet. That's what they call supplements. Exactly. It's something. And people are like, oh, I'm taking my supplements. I had one patient came. She was taking so many supplements. She wasn't hungry. She's like, oh, I don't eat. I'm like, why not? Wow. I'm like, wow. And I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. And, and, and this was a doctor who was doing integrated medicine. So they thought they were doing okay because they had them on the pills, but she couldn't eat. And I was like, this is supposed to supplement a diet. Like right. that's already full of colorful vegetables of all the, of the rainbow. You're eating the red, mm -hmm. you know, purples and, and greens. And it's, and you're supplementing what you can't eat because you can't eat like, you know, five tons of broccoli a day, but you can take an extra supplement, you know, so you mm -hmm. can get your, you know, six to nine servings of vegetables in a day. But it's just, we have to get back to the basics. And, yes. and that's what all of us are trying to do with our YouTube videos and our, you know, all of us are going on YouTube live. We're, we're doing Facebook lives. We're doing um, Instagram lives. And I think that's what we're all kind of trying to do is get back to the basics and teach basic naturopathic medicine to help mm -hmm. people take care of themselves. Cause we don't know how this virus is going to react to all the yeah. things. We're doing. Mm -hmm. we know what right. the body we don't know does. anything right now. Yeah. We don't know very much at all, but, <laughs> we know, but we know that if we give the body what it needs and remove obstacles to cure, it has the amazing ability to kill itself. Yeah, right. naturopathic mm -hmm. medicine. Like that's yeah. that's what we do. So I was actually just about to um to ask that. So some we we sort of touched on the food, um, and somebody just asked, you know, what foods should we be eating? So I would actually like um to hear, you know, like your each by each person's kind of tidbits on what you think a person should be eating. Um, but I would say to the person who asks, you know, what should we be eating? first of all, we should be eating for health, right? Mm -hmm. So um, my one tidbit would be when you're preparing your meals or preparing your plate, make vegetables the center of your meal. So instead of making a big piece of meat, like the, the center of your meal, and then you put everything around it, make your vegetables the big piece of your meal. And then, you know, make meat and you know whatever else your side dish and then that way you'll be more likely to get um what you need mm -hmm. i tell people to experiment um you know i start asking like you know what do what do you like what what vegetables do you like um and one of my mentors has a has a book out that's um the title of it is first edition then subtraction mm -hmm. and i monkey quasi um, and that is also where I start. I, that was mentioned to me very early on in medical school. Don't automatically start taking things away from people. They're less, they're, they're going to shut down once you start saying, I need you to stop doing this, stop doing this, stop doing this. Yeah. So I start, I start by adding something in. Like, I want you to add to, you know, like I go to Jack in a box three times a week, real story, real patient. And I said, okay, all right. Now, on those other two days that you're not going to Jack in the Box, I want you to incorporate, you know, more more fruit. What fruit do you like? Then I want you to make sure that you're that you have one of those with you on on those days. You know, increasing those servings of fruits. Um, what vegetables? What vegetables do you like? So that's where we started, right? Like mm -hmm. meeting, this is where that person is. That's where I'm meeting them. Um, as we went on, I then started to take away things. So I initially just added, I want you to add these things into your diet. Mm 
And what was what was found, what I was told, I didn't believe it when I was in medical school. They're like, you know, what's going to happen is they're going to notice how good they feel. They're going to be eating so much more of the good stuff. They're not going to want this. You know, they're not going to want the more unhealthy foods. And that is exact. And this was, you know, I'm in medical school 2005. That's when I started. This was 2000, 2017 when this happened. Patient comes back in, you know, I'm finding that I'm not wanting. I haven't, this week, haven't been to Jack in the Box at all. Wow. Wonderful. I've been eating this. I've been eating that. I tried this vegetable. I tried that vegetable. And I'm like, wonderful. So I really do believe adding things in for people initially, mm -hmm. um, rather than in, from the beginning saying, this is what we're going to take out. This is what mm -hmm. I want you to stop doing. That's been very helpful for me in getting, getting across the folks. I had a similar experience, except for I started taking things away um, when I first started. And so <laughs> I remember a patient, a patient told me he, uh, he was out and we, you know, he saw me out and he's like, yeah, that is my doctor. She has me on a, if it tastes good, spit it out diet. <laughs> and that's when I realized that the method I was using wasn't quite the best, but you know, and that came from having to see that, you know, it, you do have to meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. You will have those patients that eat, you know, McDonald's. I had a patient that ate McDonald's every day. 5,000 calories worth of McDonald's in one sitting every day. Like that kind of situation, you can't say, okay, now I want you to eat all vegetables and we're going to go vegan this week. No, that's not, I mean, unless you're following a celebrity, people just don't make those changes like automatically. Exactly. Uh -huh. Unless, exactly. you know, somebody on TV says, hey, I'm going vegan. And they're like, oh yeah, me too. <laughs> But then I tell you, I one thing and then, you know, I get all the sass, all the sass. <laughs> so I, I, I do the same thing, Dr. Sophia. I, I go, you know, here's the thing. You know, this is where we're going to start. Do the best that you can. I want you to do, add more vegetables to your diet. Because people like to add fruits, which is the thing, you know, with diabetes. I know you know this, Dr. Trisha. Mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. like, always want to be like, I mean, all my fruits and vegetables. And I'm like, so how many vegetables are you eating? And they're not. They're eating only fruit. And so I'm like, that's a lot of sugar. So let's just try to eat some vegetables. So I tell them to add the vegetables to the diet. And I'm like, and I say that, what vegetables do you like? And we start there. And then I will be specific with vegetables if there's like nutrient deficiencies. For instance, if there's vitamin D, then we're going to start, like get you some collards in. Here are the things that have vitamin D. Here are the things that have vitamin E. Because people like that. They like the idea of saying, hey, I'm not going to put you on a pill. Right. But I want you to put yeah. in your diet and here are the foods you can get this, this vitamin from. And people love that. People mm -hmm. love it. But then what ends up happening is they're like, oh my gosh, like I am feeling so much better, but I'm eating a lot. I'm eating a lot. <laughs> so can mm -hmm. I get a multivitamin? I'm like, yep, got him. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you can get on a multivitamin. Let me tell you why you need this. And then, and then they're more open because they realize like, wow, our nutrients our like our food is less nutrient dense than it used to be mm -hmm. you know, back in 1970. It's not as like our, our soil has been robbed of nutrients. So food is just not as nutritious. So we have to eat so much more of it to get the nutrients we want. And then they have impaired digestion. So we have to heal the gut, get them nutrient dense foods, then supplement. And so meeting them where they are is how I go about it. And then you start taking away stuff because what happens is they feel better. And then when they eat the thing they don't like with my patients, they get a rash, they get an eczema yeah. lesion, they get acne. They wake up the next day with cystic acne. They're like, Oh my gosh, I went out drinking with my friends. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. And I'm like, yeah, cause I, we had just done a liver cleanse and your skin is perfect mm -hmm. and you just mucked it up. Because you went out and had, you can't, you can do one thing, but you can't do alcohol with the dairy, with the, with the bread from the pizza and the, and the foods you're allergic to all at once. That's too much inflammation. So, but then they have to see it for themselves. And mm -hmm. I'm just lucky enough to have patients that have skin rashes so they can see it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I told you so, because I am not above saying I told you so to all my patients. <laughs> Dr. Petty coming right in. Dr. 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 Petty, indeed. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the second t-shirt. <laughs> Dr. Petty LaBelle. Yep. Petty Pendergrass, okay? <laughs> Dr. Mike and Dr. Jaquel, did you want to chime in on this and then we'll wrap up after that? Yeah, I would just say, like we said um, all along tonight, is 
that there is no general diet for any one person, right? We can't get on here and say, everybody should eat this. Everybody should be vegan. Everybody should, um, you know, adhere to the keto diet. Um, every individual person is going to have different needs, right? Um, so that's where I would start. What do you need? So meeting the person where they are, right? Like Dr. Sim said. Uh, but if I had to say anything general, I would say making sure that you're consuming healthy fats, that you got complex carbohydrates on board, not simple carbs. Um, looking for protein, make sure you have protein at each meal and also um, looking for fiber. So those are the things we wanna make sure that we have in each meal if possible. Um, and then if you can, you know, I have some patients, I'm sure you guys will agree with me, that either, like Dr. Sim said, isn't eating at all, or, oh, I just eat one meal a day. Well, can we work on that? Can we go from one meal a day to at least two meals? Um, and they can be two small meals, but let's try and at least get some consistency um, three to four small meals a day. So that way we're able to stabilize that blood sugar, um, keep the brain happy, keep the muscles, the heart happy. Um, so those would be some of the basics where I would start. But knowing, you know, if we get a comment on Facebook or Instagram or a question, hey, what should I be eating? Um, absolutely cannot answer that in the comments. So we're going to have to make a consultation so that we know specifically what you need so right. we can best fit your needs, right? So if I just tell you generally, this is what you need to do, that's not going to be the best um, recommendation for you. The best recommendation for you, uh, you're going to be able to get if we can sit down, have a consult, get to know who you are, so that way we can approach you specifically. If Dr. Micah, I would like, if you don't mind, to um, give examples of what you mean, because mm -hmm. I'm sure there are people who are watching who don't know what a healthy fat is, yeah. you know, what a protein is, what a complex carbohydrate is. So if you can give an example that you like of those. Yeah. yeah. So complex carbohydrates, I'll give you a quick example. So say, for instance, a sweet potato, right, instead of a white potato. So a sweet potato is going to be considered a complex carb, whereas a white potato is going to be considered a simple carbohydrate. Um, when we talk about healthy fats, we spoke a little bit about um, uh, fish as it relates to vitamin D content. So I love sardines. When I tell my patients that, they kind of give me a, I'm like, girl, girl or guy listen they're um, low on the totem pole they're going to have less um, heavy metal content but they're going to be chock full of omega-3s right and so get those sardines get the cod get the salmon wild caught um, <laughs> <laughs> those are going to be our healthy fats olive oils things of that sort are going to be what we call our polyunsaturated fats and they're going to be considered healthy um, people shy away from butter but butter is actually great. So we want to make sure that we're getting butter versus something like a margarine. So, um, and I'm sure we can be on here all night long talking healthy fats, protein, you know, lean protein. Um, but again, that's going to be specific too. If someone is iron deficient, we may want them to get a little bit more red meat than someone who has mm -hmm. adequate iron level. So yeah, yeah, Thank that's you. what, that's why I'll, I'll keep it at that. Thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of what everybody said, I think for me, it's always moderation. Like I want people to be honest. And so if you are looking to go to a naturopathic doctor, you know, being honest with what you are actually doing, how much water you're drinking, you know, I, I could find out when I do a blood draw and it's taking forever and it's really thick. And I'm like, okay, did you, do you drink water? It's like, oh, I drink four ounces of water a day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it ends up affecting at the end of the day. So you're not it's better to just, you know, say where it's at so we can actually work with you. And um, especially with kids, because I see a lot of like kids in my practice. And so I'm always having, especially the young boys make some deal about like one vegetable they're going to do, or, um, you know, trying to make sure it's not something that they're not, you know, what are they actually going to do versus like, you know, what they should do. So, so that's always part of the piece. And then I, I feel like I have to, because um, from the naturopathic perspective, the plug is just also making sure if you go to a naturopathic doctor, you go to a doctor that's went to an accredited naturopathic school. I'm realizing we're using that in kind of not, not loosely, but we're saying it. Yeah. Um, but there are different types of um, licensing and education levels. So 
all of us and went through a four-year accredited naturopathic program. We've taken, you take two licensed um, exams as well to be licensed as a naturopathic doctor. So it's a four-year postdoctoral, it's a medical program. So just to be clear, because I know there's different credentials out there, different names that are used, but mm -hmm. you just, just make sure if you're seeking to look at a naturopathic doctor that they have the, the proper education to be able to provide you the care that, the proper care that you need. Absolutely. Um, I want to wrap us up. Thank you all so much um, for s jumping in on this idea. <laughs> so your support of me and doing it so quickly, because this is just literally like, yeah, let's do it tomorrow. <laughs> and they're like, okay, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Um, so uh, thank you all so much. Um, I would say to those of you that are watching us that have joined us, thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. I hope that um, you, the things that we were talking about, how we broadened the conversation. Mm -hmm. So we discussed COVID-19, COVID vitamin D, but then all the other things that go into healthy immune function, how that ties into chronic diseases. Um, you know, we're impacted by COVID to a higher degree because we are also impacted. When I say we, I'm talking about black and brown folk um, have higher incidences of these chronic disease states. And it's, it's related to all of these things. Um, but broader picture, taking a more holistic view, um, we have to have these other considerations. We have to talk about sleep and diet and sunshine and exercise and community. What did you say, Dr. Sasha? Pooping. And pooping. And, yes, Always pooping. pooping. And, you know, drinking enough water. <laughs> Do you look thirsty? So um, it's it's a like I said, it's a it's a broader conversation. Um, so. Look for look for these folks. If you're in the if, if you're in their area, look for these. These are the folks that you need to be looking for. You know, to be either if, if they are able to be your primary care doc or a part of your team or a part of your healthcare team, mm -hmm. um, then add them on. I think that add us on. Add, add a naturopathic doctor. Get a naturopathic doctor in your life. In your life. Get a naturopathic yes. doctor in your life. T-shirt. <laughs> Another like, t-shirt. Yeah. We're making a lot of t-shirts. Get, get a naturopathic doctor in your life. Um, We're still watching. If you are trying to find a naturopathic doctor, um, all of us, many of us, are doing virtual appointments now. But if you want yeah. someone local, just drop a comment. Where, what state you're in, where you are, yeah. um, because we can all chime in. I know, like everybody, and if I don't know everybody, I know someone that know that person. Right. <laughs> so I right. will people find you. A naturopathic doctor and I love referrals that's like my thing I want to figure out how I can just be referral central because I love referring my friends um, and my family and my friends of friends and random people I know to naturopathic doctors who are my friends because I know that we do good work I know that you get that whole person approach that you've been looking for because we're the mm -hmm. doctors you've always been looking for that you didn't know existed and mm -hmm. now we're here and we're, we're, we're standing up and we're saying we're here and we're here to take care of you. So if you don't know, if you want someone local, you're like, I love you, Dr. DJ. I live in Tennessee. I know somebody in Tennessee. I know, I know people in all the states that we can get you hooked up with. So just drop a comment. We're mm -hmm. going to put this on everybody's page, all the doctor's page. This will be there. So just drop a comment and ask us where, to, where, you, where you live. Yes. And I also want to say thank you for pivoting um, and finding where this was because I am not technologically savvy, <laughs> so we had some. We, uh, there were some challenges, um, but uh, these, these, as Dr. DJ said, this is going to be posted on all of our pages. You can come back and watch it later on. Um, thank you again, one more time. Thank you all so much for rallying together and coming on in, um, in with such quick turnaround to lend your voices, lend our voices um, to this, this discussion of the times that we're in um, that are impacting our communities. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. I will be uh, continuing to do lives and, and things like this. So this will not be the last time you will see these wonderful folks. Um, and I'm going to be trying to get more people in and add more voices as well. Um, but uh, again, I can't thank you enough for being here. I appreciate you. I appreciate the work that you all are doing um, and supporting me um, as my colleague. And again, thank you all for watching. And with that, we are going to say good night. Thank you guys. Good night. Good night. It's been a pleasure.